Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released watchOS 10.1 to the public. watchOS 10.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone and is available on the Series 4 Apple Watch all the way up to the latest Apple Watch Ultra 2. And it brings some new features and changes, more specifically to the Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2. But first let's take a look at the overall size. As you can see it came in at 230 megabytes, that's on my Apple Watch Ultra 2, and this will vary greatly depending on which version you're upgrading from and which device you're on. Along with this, Apple also released iOS 17.1, iPadOS 17.1, and many other updates, even for older devices as well. Now, if you're a developer and beta tester at this point, if you no longer want to receive the betas, I would just go ahead and turn off the beta updates. If you want to continue, maybe with watchOS 10.2, then you can go ahead and just leave it on. Now, as far as new features, let's go ahead and take a look at that as Apple has updated the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the double tap feature they promised with the introduction of the device. If we go into our Apple Watch app, go down to gestures, you'll see we have a new gesture for double tap. Once this is enabled, you can now use it to play or pause your music, skip music, go to smart stack and advance or select. And if we put it on our wrist, you'll see how it works. It's very similar to that accessibility feature we had before, but if we go into our music, tap playing, connect to a device. And if you have music ready to go on your wrist, just double tap to either play or pause. So I'll do that again. You'll see a little gesture icon at the top and it plays the music double tap again with my fingers and it pauses. So you're just tapping your fingers together quickly and it will play or pause. It seems to work really well. You can do this to hang up a call and much more. So it's really nice that it's available there. Additionally, Apple has updated this with name drop. Name drop is something we had with iOS 17 on the iPhone, but now it's available on the Apple watch. As long as you have an Apple watch SE two, Apple watch series seven, all the way up to the Apple watch ultra two. Unfortunately, Apple watch series six and older will not get this feature And name drop is one of those features where you can just bring your watch up to your phone and actually drop your contact information over. You'll see it just jumps over like the airdrop feature and you can transfer that information information. Additionally, you can select what you want to transfer by going into your settings here in your contacts. You'll see that we have the option for name drop. As long as that's enabled, you can use it to name drop, bringing it to someone else. There's also a new complication to help with this. So if we press and hold and change this complication, this is modular. If we tap on edit, go to our complications. The one in the middle, for those of you that are curious is called Lumi. It's an app that I paid for. And if we go down here, you'll see if we go to contacts. So you want to find contacts here. We've got compass. So we'll go down to contacts. You'll have a new option for my card. You can use that. And when you tap on this, you can select what you want to share. So you'll see it brings it to the complication. And now if I go into this, tap on it here, you'll see it gives me the option to share my email address. I can select from a phone number or something else. Then we tap on share. It gives us a little animation of what we need to do. Bring it close to our iPhone and you'll see it shares just like that. So you can bring it close to another phone. You can bring it close to another watch and share your contact information. So that's available now. Something else very minor that they've updated is if we go to our watches and then we go to add an Apple watch, they've updated some of the graphics here or the watch faces that are on the setup page for the Apple watch. So that's very minor, but this has changed in this update along with iOS 17.1 within this update, Apple has fixed a lot of issues as well. And one of the things they don't mention specifically that they've fixed that they mentioned in their notes. If we go into the feedback app, if you were a beta tester, you'll see that there's a resolved issue with power where they fixed increased power consumption might occur when an Apple watch running watch OS 10.1 is paired with an iPhone with iOS 17.0 or watch OS 10.0 is paired with iOS 17.1. That's been fixed in this update. They didn't mention it in the actual notes, but they mentioned it for beta testers and developers. So it's good to see they fixed that power drain issue. Another thing that they fixed has to do with with the home app. So if we go into the home app and within home, we've got our environmental settings here, we've got our grid forecast and more, and they addressed an issue that actually would cause the climate section in the home app to be completely blank. So that's been updated. They've also fixed an issue. Whereas if you were using assistive touch, so maybe you're using assistive touch on your Apple watch and you were using certain features with that. So if we go down to assistive touch, if you have that enabled, if you went and turned it off, sometimes the border would show up, even though the feature was turned off, they've now fixed that as well. 
They've also fixed an issue where the cities and weather weren't syncing properly. So if you're using weather, if we go into weather, sometimes they wouldn't sync properly. It wouldn't show the correct information. And that's been fixed as well in this update. They've also fixed an issue where if you're scrolling, sometimes the scroll bar would show up where it didn't belong. So maybe you were in something else, your main screen and you scroll. Sometimes it would show a scroll bar and that's been resolved. They've removed that where it doesn't belong. Additionally, they fixed an issue where if maybe you're using the compass, so if we slide over here to another watch face and you're using the compass with elevation or something else that uses elevation, sometimes it was incorrect for some users where the elevation itself just wasn't accurate. That's been resolved in this update. As far as security updates, Apple updated quite a few things. If we scroll down on Apple's security website, you'll see iOS 17.1 along with all the other releases today. And if we go into watch OS 10.1, you'll see all the security updates here. Everything from Find My to the Kernel to Siri, as well as VoiceOver and more. So lots of updates here, and you'll see they're available for the Apple Watch Series 4 and later. Where this one for Find My, the impact was an app may be able to read sensitive location information. The description or the fix was the issue was addressed with improved handling of caches. Then it shows the CVE number and then the person they're crediting with helping them find this. So lots of different security updates, and definitely I would recommend installing it just for that, along with some of those new features if you have watch os 9 or apple watch ultra 2 so those updates are available now as far as the overall performance and what it's like using it so far it's been nice and fast if we go into music or maybe we go into the compass maybe go into weather everything seems to load nice and quickly now of course you would expect that with the latest watches but in general everything seems to be nice and fast so if you're going into maybe the decibel level that takes a second to load but everything again seems nice and fast as far as that goes as far as battery life well i've been getting pretty good battery life on this one let's first go down to battery here and under battery i should have a hundred percent battery health since I've been using this only a couple months or a month and a half or so, if we go down, you'll see the maximum capacity is 100%. So I would expect that to easily last me a year. The Apple Watch Ultra 1 actually still has 100% battery capacity as well. As far as battery life, though, you'll see I'm at 88%. It's been off the charger for a while. You can actually see that here where it was last charged at 10, 11 a.m. It's currently 3.20 p.m. So it's gone down a little bit, but it's easily lasting me about two days at this point. I do typically charge it every night. I don't use it for sleep monitoring, but it's easily getting me through a couple days. I think this update seems to be a little bit better that way than the previous updates. Now, as far as future updates, watch OS 10.2 beta one, along with iOS 17.2 beta one, I would expect probably it could be tomorrow or the next day, but most likely next week, Apple has an event planned for next week. So if we go to Apple's website and if you scroll down, I made a separate video about this yesterday, but you'll see here or the other day, depending on when you're watching this, they have the Apple event called scary fast. It's for the Mac. You'll see it transformed the little Apple icon here to the finder icon hinting at max. And that's on 10 30 or October 30th at 5 PM Pacific time or 8 PM Eastern time. So very late in the day. I don't remember one that's been that late before, but Apple will have that event probably after that event, or maybe the day after that, we'll see iOS 17.2 beta one, hopefully with the journal app, watch OS 10.2, hopefully with the journal app as well, or something to go along with that. So we should see that hopefully very soon, probably not this week, but it very well could be. And we'll talk about the overall experience of iOS and watch OS and more later this weekend in the regular follow-up video. If you found anything else in watchOS 10.1, let me know in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.